Welcome to the Beauty and Business Breakdown with Becca Healy. I'm Becca. I'm an entrepreneur, permanent makeup artist, and owner of Forever Brows and Beauty Studio. My studio is located in Cincinnati, Ohio, and my channel is where I come to talk to other beauty professionals, entrepreneurs, and people who inspire me. We're going to be covering different topics every episode and leaving you with inspiration, insight, and business tips. Please like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Forever Brows and Beauty Studio. Now let's jump right in. Hi, Joanne. Hey, how's it going? It's going great. How are you? Good. Oh, one sec. I pushed something that I wasn't supposed to push. There we go. Okay. <laughs> That's so funny. You're talking about your Tumblr. I pulled mine out too. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> funny. I just have like BCA in mine. No boobs. <laughs> yeah, mine. Just I don't know what. The <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Got to stay hydrated. Right. <laughs> so thank Thanks you so for much for joining me. Yeah. Super excited. Super yeah. excited to talk about this. This is something that's like so many of us are going through and have been through and all of that. Thankfully, I'm in the tail end of it. So it, yep. uh, yeah, been there, done that, you know, <laughs> wrote the book, <laughs> read the book, but yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So I was just telling my um, audience to let them know, like, I'm not a mom. I don't have, I'm single. I don't have children and it's just me and my fur baby. So I don't have the responsibility added on on top of being a mom. So I wanted to have somebody come on who could really share their experiences and give some yeah. good insight and give some tips about how to juggle that. So yeah, no, that's, that is, it's nice that you're trying to um, discover that for yourself without actually experiencing it because, and it sounds so cliche because you really don't know unless you go through it with kids. You can't, you cannot describe it to people. It is a whole other level of like, nothing is about you anymore, you know, and when we're business owners, we want to focus on that. But then all of this is happening over here. So it's a lot. It's a lot to juggle. So, so thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that because not very many single people who without kids are that open to hearing this side of things, really, because why would they, right? It's not a part of their life. So yeah, <laughs> oh, I want to yeah. be, I want to be prepared for when that time does come. Like if I can, <laughs> if I can plan for that, then great. So um, there's a okay, first thing, first word of advice, first piece of advice, you can't plan for anything with kids. <laughs> you just can't. Stuff just happens. <laughs> you can try as much as you can, but it is what it is, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell us um, who you are and what you do. Sure, sure. So my name is Joanne LeBay. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, um, and I have been in the beauty industry for, man, over 15 years now. I am a hairstylist by trade, um, and I recently took a permanent makeup course um, last year. That's what I did during my lockdown time. I decided to, this is what I'm going to try to do now, just to add a few services, and it's been great. Um, but, so right now I work from home, which has been a game changer for me. Um, but there was a time where I had a six year old and I had an 18 month old and I owned a brick and mortar salon. I had 14 employees. It was busy. It was crazy. Um, and then I got divorced. Um, and I, you know, single mom with all of that on your plate. I have no family where I live whatsoever to support me whatsoever. Um, so there were no babysitters. There was none of that. So, so yeah, no, I lived it. That, that's kind of my, my background as far as that goes. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, tell us like the first thing that you learned early on as being a mom like what was one of the first tips that you learned for yourself as far as being a mom goes or a mom in business um a mom in business um that you can't do it all <laughs> you can't you just can't you can't physically there aren't enough hours in the day there aren't enough there's just not enough time there's not enough energy um I, I was one of those moms that, you know, I got pregnant quite young. I was 19 when I got pregnant and I had him at 20 years old and I was lucky enough that I could stay at home with him. 
Um, however, I, you know, I, I hate to say it and I don't know why, but there's a certain stigma. I am not one of those moms that is a hundred percent fulfilled by, by staying home with my kids. I, I love them dearly. I absolutely love them, but I am definitely an entrepreneur. I always have a project on the go. So I needed more. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we had our second son, uh, our oldest was six and a half, our second son, my second baby was really difficult. He was really, really tough. Um, he had a lot of issues and things like that. I, and again, no support. It was all me. My ex-husband traveled all over the world. I was always home alone. I found it really difficult. And then the opportunity came along to buy a hair salon. I wasn't a hairstylist yet. Mm -hmm. And so it, um, I honestly was having such a difficult time being home. I clearly was depressed. That's another thing that comes with all of this too, postpartum depression and with having babies and things like that. I, again, I love, I love my kids. I love them dearly. I would do anything for them, but I needed, I needed to do something else. And so, you know, like I said, you just can't do it all. So clearly I found, you know, a day home to take care of him during the day. And it just gave me that, I don't want to say break. Well, it's a break. For me, it was a break, basically. Mm -hmm. um, he was really, he was colicky, he cried all the time. He, anyways, really tough kid. Um, so going to work was like my saving grace as far as that goes. But with that came a whole other pile of problems or issues or struggles, right? So I just remember being late for everything. I was late for work because I was getting the kids ready and on the bus and they would miss the bus. Or, you know, I was late coming home for dinner because I was with a client um, with hair. Hair is a little bit different than permanent makeup. With hair. You never know what time you're going to be done at. You never know if that color is going to work the way, you know, if the highlights are going to lift properly. You never know how the hair is going to react. So that oftentimes I had to stay late to finish a client. So, yeah, yeah it, my biggest tip is to not, don't put everything on your shoulders. Don't feel guilty all the time because we all know that there's mom guilt it doesn't matter what you're doing there's mom guilt all the time um when you're home with your kids you have a million other things that you need to do you feel guilty about not getting to it and then when you're doing those things then you're you feel guilty about not being with your kids so it's just a constant internal battle <laughs> of guilt um that's, that's really tough yeah it's hot it's hard it is really hard um yeah, don't compare yourself to other other moms because you know what? There's always going to be someone out there that has more time, that has more money, that has a nanny, that has family around you to help you, you know, to help them and things like that. So if you are in my position, I I felt guilty all the time. I was late for everything all the time. Um, and in the end, like I put so much pressure on myself in all areas of my life that when it came to my kids, I worked so much at one point, my, my youngest was four and I came home one day and this is what changed it for me. I came home one day and he looked at me and he, he looked at me. He's like, why are you here? And I was like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm home, but it's, I was never home. I was never home. I was working all the time because I owned a business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're a business owner you work all the time. It's, yeah. There's always something that you have to do, right? That's why so, I'm single. yeah, that's that's yeah, why I'm yeah, single life. yeah, right. It just there's always something to do, and yeah. spreading yourself to, so thin to the point where everything suffers isn't isn't the way to do it at all. So if you can delegate, if you can, you know, ask for help, receive help. Don't be afraid to ask for it because you need it. I don't care who you are, you need the help if you have kids and a business, for sure. So, so yeah, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, it does, for sure. Okay. <laughs> Good. So, so how did you go about making that happen for yourself and finding the work-life balance? Like, how long did it take you to find a balance? It, I, don't, I don't know that I truly ever did, to be honest. Um, it, I, it did balance out a little bit more. You know, I hired staff, I hired receptionists, I hired an accountant, I hired all of those people. Um, but it never really 
I don't think it ever really balanced out. Um, my oldest son saw the difference. I was home with him until he was, you know, well, until he was in school, really. I was home full time with him. And, you know, we did the parks, we did the crafts, we did all of that. Um, but my youngest never really got that uh, with me personally, um, because I was always working. So I don't know that I ever really found it. Um, you get better at it, for sure. Um, I used to say yes to all of the clients, you know, especially when you're starting out, you you have to take what comes in because you're building a clientele and, you, you know, you really want to make it work and all of that. So, um yeah, I said yes to a lot of clients, so I've learned to say no, for sure. That makes a huge difference. I used to answer, you know, messages and requests and all that at all hours of the night. I used to have clients that would, you know, send me messages at 2 in the morning, and I would answer them, like, hello, that's ridiculous, <laughs> right? I was up with my baby, so I was like, oh, whatever, I'll just, you know, I'll just answer this. But no, yeah. no. So it's really important to set boundaries, for sure. Mm -hmm. Set boundaries and actually stick to them right so that definitely helped a lot as far as that goes and um my kids are big now so it's a lot easier right and I work from home so I don't have an actual physical space that I'm attached to that I have to get to all the time um I think a lot of arguing with partners <laughs> also right like it's like you say you said it's the reason you're single because it's you have to do certain things when you own a business and if your partner isn't entrepreneurial in any way shape or form they don't understand right all they see is you working all the time right mm -hmm. so and constantly putting out fires and things like that so so yeah so definitely delegating setting boundaries you know mm -hmm. We can say to set boundaries all we want, but you have to stick to them. If you don't stick to them, they're useless, right? And then clients just won't follow anything that you say. Like, they won't believe anything that you say, right? So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah, I would say that's probably the best way. Um, now, that I, now that my kids are big, I, I really work on setting those boundaries, and now I work four days a week, um, mm -hmm. and it works out great. So I do have that time with my partner and – I mean, my kids want nothing to do with me right now. They're big. They're doing their own thing, right? It's just my oldest is slowly coming back around and things like that. You know, he'll text me, hey, mom, what do you do on Sunday? Can I come over for dinner or whatever? Mm -hmm. But my youngest is just, I mean, if it weren't for COVID right now, I, would, I wouldn't see him. So it is. Oh. <laughs> how, old, how old are they now? So my youngest is 16, um, and my oldest is 23, and I have two boys. And that's a, that's a, that's another, you know, thing too. I think honestly, boys, younger, they're difficult because they break everything, all of that. But older, I think they're a lot easier than girls as far as that goes. So I think I had it pretty easy as far as <laughs> the teenage years go. So yeah, yeah. So. It's quite, it's, it's, yeah, no, it's quite the, uh, it's a juggling act for sure. Um, for sure. I can't even tell you. And this is, you know, I have a lot of regrets as far as, um, the way that I handle things back then too. I, I, my kids went, I, I, I honestly don't remember if I even went to a single Christmas concert. You know, things like that. I would miss their sport events all the time and things like that. And that, don't do that. Don't do that. Because that, you know, your kids, your kids don't care if their birthday parties are like Pinterest worthy. They don't care. They care that you're there. They care that you spend time with them. That's all they'll remember, right? So, so yeah. And I think every parent has regrets. Everyone does. We do it, you know, we do the best we can. And when you have a baby, they tell you, you know, do what you can to survive. It's kind of the same thing. When you're an entrepreneur with kids, you just, every day is a grind. Every day there's fires to put out at work. There's fires to put out at home. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. So I don't know if I'm the bearer of bad news or not. I don't want to be, but it's, 
they, be prepared. It's rough. It's really tough. And it, if you're, I mean, if you're a business owner now and you've learned to delegate, then maybe that part of being a mom won't be so hard for you if you do have kids. But I had no support whatsoever. I had no family here at all. So it was rough. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So out of that, like to spin that around, what would be the most rewarding part about being a mom and a business owner? You know what? For years, I... I constantly questioned, like, am I doing the right thing? But I was a better mom if I was a business owner. I honestly was. I wasn't as grumpy. I had more energy when I was with them. I cherished the time with them even more. Um, it just, you know, we made it quality time as far as that goes. But I think the most rewarding thing for me, um, you know, my boys, I'm not with their dad anymore, but he is not an entrepreneur at all. Um, you know, he's been in the same job, he'll die in the same position, and but that's what he likes, which is great. Um, for me, you know, a little while ago, my oldest, he he started to dabble in photography and things like that. He started an Instagram account, and the little bugger, I didn't realize he had it in him, but he's he's basically building a business with that. He has sold a bunch of his images, he's been hired to do photography for a bunch of events in our city and things like that. So that's super rewarding for me because I'm just like, ah, he's figured it out. Right. And then yeah. with my youngest, right. Like, I'm just like, oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. And then with my youngest, again, I didn't realize I was teaching them this as I was working, but my youngest, this happened just last summer, actually. He COVID, he was 15, didn't have a job, but wanted money. And probably I want to say four years ago he kept asking me for money to buy things and I was like dude you need to figure out how to make money like I'm not just your bank kind of thing so I told him I'm like why don't you go to you know a consignment shop find things and then just flip them kind of thing so we did that this was my project with him we did that for a little while and then of course he lost interest and last summer He's like, mom, can I have some money? I'm like, no, dude, you can't. I, I'm shut down. Forget it. I'm not, the bank is closed. And he went to a consignment shop on his own. And he made like 300 bucks in two days. I was just like, okay, he learned. He figured it out too. So, so yeah, so that, I would say that is like, I'm so, so proud of them because they, you know, they're not, they know how to figure things out on their own and how to hustle, I guess, right? I guess that's probably the biggest thing they've learned from me because I am constantly, constantly hustling. And I'm sure you're the same way. I, you know, we're part, kind of part of the same mentorship program. So it's kind of, you got to hustle to make it work. So yeah. 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 It's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Hopefully it sticks. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> yeah they but sound, yeah, they sound like really good kids. Oh, uh, you know what? I've been really lucky as far as that goes, for sure. That's amazing. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's, um, I don't know. It's like I said, it's, it's a constant balancing act. And don't think that you will ever, ever achieve perfect balance. Because it doesn't exist. It absolutely does not exist. It's just, it's constantly, you know, it's an ebb and flow of things and it's just back and forth and you just kind of have to roll with it. And that's the other thing, right? Like kids are unpredictable. There's emergencies. There's, oh, you know, you have this big, you know, you're attending a conference or you're speaking at it, you know, you're, you're teaching a class and your kid just threw up at school. Like you have to go get them, right? Things like that. So it's, you just have to roll with it. Learn to be easygoing. Otherwise, you'll die. You'll drown. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> right? That's, that's probably my biggest piece of yeah. advice. Do what you have to to survive. That's it. So, yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, how about you? you. Um, oh, go, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I was going to say, do, like, are you figuring out how to delegate things and things like that in your own business? Um, I'm starting to, so I'm, I'm building a team. I have two artists that work with me and, um, you know, we're, 
I'm sharing with them how to do the marketing stuff on Instagram, like getting them up to speed with that. And then we're going to, we'll start moving into some delegating. Perfect. So, yeah. It's Perfect. Good. <laughs> good. Yeah. So I think like having people like you in my corner that can help me navigate it when it's time, I think will be helpful. Like, yeah. Uh, did you have, I mean, besides like, did you have anybody that you would talk to or like, how did you work through not having support as far as like people in your, to help out? Like, how did you deal with the depression and stuff like that, that can, that came with that? Um, I want to say, well, as soon as I started working, to be honest, as soon as I, you know, I have a, a friend that moved to my city and she was a nurse stylist. Um, so we actually ended up buying the salon together. So she was the hairstylist. She was going to do the clients and I was going to do everything else, like the business side of things and all of that. So I feel like as soon as I started with all of that, it kind of, it really, really energized me. It gave me, um, it gave me what I needed as far as like balancing things out up here. Um, it's like I said, my, my youngest was a really, really, really difficult baby. Um, to the point where, you know, my mom babysat him one time and she gave him back. She was like, I've never seen a baby like this. I'm like, I know <laughs> like, he's that hard. Um, but yeah, no. So it, and a lot of times, I mean, after you, you know, with hair, hair is a little bit different than permanent makeup because hair, they come to you every six weeks, every eight weeks, every, you know what I mean? So you see them a lot more regularly. So over time they become friends, you, you know, your friend and things like that. So my clients helped me out a lot <laughs> as far as talking things out um, mm -hmm. and all of that. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it was really lonely as you know, being a business owner can also be really lonely. Um, and being a mom, being a mom, you know, being home with your kid, I, that's one thing that I don't think a lot of people realize it's very, very lonely. It's so lonely. Your days are so long and it literally, you're so exhausted. You barely have time to eat, you know, and yet at the end of the day, you look around and your house is still a mess and you feel like you didn't do anything all day, but it's, it's rough. Like it's, it's hard mentally, but like I said, you have to find things that you love to do and actually make time for them, whether that's going for a walk, working out, you know, drying. I don't care what it is. And I didn't take the time to do that. I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and with my first son, we had him so young that we were broke. Like, we were living off $6 an hour um, with a baby. And I wasn't working. So we were broke. So I went for a lot of walks. We didn't have a car. Mm -hmm. um it was really really lonely and none of my like none of my friends had kids it was just me right so it's very very lonely so definitely find something that um distracts you from all that and kind of just resets your mind as far as that goes so so yeah so I talked to my business partner um I ended up buying her out eventually but um I talked a lot with my business partner and my clients were huge huge as far as um talking things out <laughs> but yeah I would say that would probably be the number one and after a few years I just I started working out and all of that and now I'm grumpy if I don't so so yeah that's my thing now <laughs> how about you what do you usually do um I definitely work out so that moving always gets me out of the funk um yeah. And then talking, talking to other people in the industry, like even just having these types of conversations is helpful, like getting to know each other more and um, just sharing each other's history and experiences. It yeah. just makes me feel more connected and, to the community and not alone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's one thing I found. Um, even when I started my business, I, well, the hair industry was is is different than the permanent makeup industry like right now we're seeing on instagram the pmu industry is like everyone is friends and everybody's helping each other out it's amazing um that's just recent in the hair industry it used to be really catty it used to be um no one shared anything you 
Oh, it was awful. Yeah. It was awful. Um, whether, you know, it was between salons or even between stylists in the salon, um, it was very, very different. It's just starting to change. So, yeah, and it's, you know, I remember one time, you know, when you're a business owner, you can't necessarily be friends with your employees. Um, you still have to maintain that authority kind of leader kind of position, right? And I remember one time I was going through my divorce. It was, everything was upside down. Um, and I just went, I had this little aesthetics room and I just went in just to sit and just to kind of breathe. But I could hear my stylist talking crap about me and I was just so defeated and they had no idea that I was still there. They thought I had just left and I was just like, what? I, I would never do that first of all, but, and I came, I, my client came in and I came out and they just died. They both just died. And I just, it was really hard not to be really upset. Um, but we talked it out afterwards and they just, they felt really, really awful. <laughs> To be honest, they felt really awful. So, I bet. Yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of that going on. A lot of that going on way back in the day. And I just I just told them, I'm like, listen, if you're not happy here, you're free to leave. Um, I don't want you to leave. I I think you're a great stylist. I love you guys personally. I don't want you to leave, but if you're not happy here, don't say. There's no point, right? You'll end up resenting me and all of that. And they ended up staying for quite a while, but we hashed it out. But um yeah, that I that's when I realized I'm like, okay, I can't be friends with my employees. I can't. And that's what I mean by it's lonely. It's really lonely. If you don't have other people to connect with that are in the same position as you. So so yeah. <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> but it's so rewarding yeah. too, you know. I'm talking about all the negative and all that, but I mean it's I would not have it any other way. I, you know, I ended up teaching cosmetology at a high school for a little bit and I just loved being with the students but I, I I had never worked in a unionized environment before and I it wasn't for me I just I'm like I gotta get out of here this isn't for me it's just a really different mentality um I think entrepreneurs are just a different breed <laughs> oh yeah and entrepreneurs and and you know the same thing goes for moms too like it's it, it, kids are so much work and entrepreneurship is, a, is nothing compared to having kids to be honest like I, I hate to minimize it but it you know being an entrepreneur is a lot of work but being a mom is just a whole other beast that you literally you don't know what you're doing you don't know what you're doing you just have to survive you keep your kids fed and watered <laughs> and spend time with them and if they make it to 18, pat yourself on the back, right? And if you can do that while running a business, it's kudos. It's hard. It's really hard. And don't, you know, like I said, don't compare yourself to others. Don't be too critical. Everyone makes mistakes no matter what, you know. At least in entrepreneurship, there's courses you can take. There's, like, steps that you can follow. But when you're a parent... You, I don't care what book you're reading. Your kid might not fit in the book, you know, in the box that the book is written for. So you kind of have to figure it out. So, and to do both at the same time is, to be honest, it's kind of a blur. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's a you stage of my have, life. You guys, you should get a trophy for that. Like you should have a plaque. <laughs> right. I need a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah, it's kind of a blur because every single day is, okay, I have to get up, I have to get my kids ready for school, I have to make them breakfast, I have to make sure their homework is done, I have to get them to school on time, and then, oh, I have to go stop at the bank to, you know, make a deposit and blah, 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 blah and all this stuff. I got to get more cash for the float at the salon. And I don't know about that anymore. I don't know who, you know, people really use cash anymore, but back then, um, there's just an endless list of things to do and just you cannot beat yourself up if you don't get to it all mm -hmm. it's the the world's not going to stop turning it's fine right yeah. that's that's definitely something i've learned as well is to not put so much pressure on myself mm -hmm. um and not to get upset you know don't get upset don't react emotionally to things and i remember i would have 
a really hard day at the salon and then I would come home and almost take it out of my kids in a way. I, you know, I, I would be short with them. I would just be, you know, I wouldn't want to play with them and things like that some days. And that, that's not okay, but it's human. It's understandable. It's just, mm-hmm. just turn the page, reset the next day and start over. Your kids will come, you know, your kids might be upset with you for 10 minutes, but the second, the second they need you or need something from you, they're going to love you all over again. It's fine. <laughs> you know, in an hour when they need to be, they need to eat, they'll be fine. So, so yeah, don't beat your, don't beat yourself up too much as far as that goes. So, so yeah, that would be my yeah, biggest that's, that's great. advice. You, 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 you know, that whole thing of, um, you can have it all. You can't, you can't have, I mean, you can have it all, just not all at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's over a lifetime, right? So keep that in mind if you're a mom and a business owner and juggling all these different balls kind of thing. So, and then, you know, eventually you'll be where I am and you'll literally feel like it was a blink of an eye and it's over, right? You still have your business, but your kids are off doing their own thing. Yeah. And it, yeah, I, it's funny because like I said, I had my son quite young and I had a lot of clients recently because he's around the same age, you know, he's 23, but when he was around 20, I had a lot of clients ask me, you know, what would you do if your son came to you and told him that his girlfriend was pregnant? And I was like, I would be ecstatic. I would be so happy for them. It would be amazing. It, you know, it would be hard having babies. And work, you know, having babies and working and all of that is hard for sure. It's hard, but it's over before you know it. And then, yeah, life is good. Life is good. So, and if you do it right, you, which no one ever does, <laughs> right? Everyone is just kind of surviving and just kind of doing what they have to to get through the day, and that's okay. And they come so. out great. Always, always. Hi, G. <laughs> yeah no it's it's um it's you know I I look back on when they were really really little and things like that and I I miss it a lot I I'm literally at the point now where I'm like okay kid have a I want a grandkid which is crazy because he's 23 he's not even done school yet (laughs) like university but (laughs) like but but because but I'm also kind of because my You know, had I lived in the same city as my family, I would have had all the support in the world, but I don't. So, and that's, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to is to help, you know, because if my son keeps going with the photography and, you know, doing his own business, he'll be in the same boat, right? As I was. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. (laughs) I know... I know G has a little one right now. I don't know if she's still on here, but um, I'm sure she she has a lot to say about that too. It's tough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about her with um, her her little ones. I know she's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you shared a lot of really good advice, and I appreciate you for being here so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And- I hope it was helpful. Yeah. If, if people are interested in, you know, a program that would offer them support, like we talked about, um, you know, being alone in the industry, the trainings that I'm offering have um, ongoing support and education. So people can be connected to me and to the community and not be alone when they're learning microblading. And um, so I wanted to share that I have, um, my training's coming out at the end of the month and they can sign up using the link in my bio to get on my VIP list. So um, yeah, so I'll be helping to add to the community and helping to grow our industry. Good. You can help other moms, (laughs) right? And that's the other thing too. In PMU, I mean, when you're just starting out, it's terrifying, right? Like I, I'm, you know, I'm almost a year into it and it was terrifying the first, you know, little bit on my own. So it's awesome that you offer that, offer that support because it's, it's needed for sure. <laughs> so. Thank you. Awesome. Well, 
it was a pleasure having you and I'll be putting up our video on YouTube um, in the next couple of weeks so people can watch it and continue to learn from you. So I appreciate Thanks. you so much, Joe. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Take care. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate the support. Please like, subscribe, share, and follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Forever Brows and Beauty Studio. And please join us again next time for new guests, new stories, and new inspiration. Thanks so much.